Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet. Uh, it's been a while since the last video. Uh, today we're going to do an introduction to Immutable JS, which is an open source library by Facebook. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's on GitHub uh, under the Facebook GitHub group at immutable-js. And the basic idea is it provides a bunch of immutable data structures. I think they have a list of them. Yep, down here. So it provides these data structures like list, stack, map, ordered map, set, ordered set, and record record. Uh, and these are more commonly found in functional programming languages like Scala or Haskell or something like that. Um, and it's pretty cool. So it provides them for JavaScript and then each of them get their own methods, um, which we'll get into. So before we cover that, I just wanted to talk very quickly about what immutability is. So the concept of mutability means mutation. So it would be any data structure that allows mutation. Uh, so for example, we have like arrays in JavaScript. Um, so if I make dir like code planet immutable, and then we go in there, and then we bim a new file like index.js, we can do like const, you know, or <laughs> that won't work actually, uh, var like my array, uh, and it equals like one, two, three, four, five, something like that. And then we can console log it. Uh, and we'll see it there. And then if like, for whatever reason, we needed the number off the end or something like that, uh, we could do like, you know, var number equals and do my array, and we could just pop the number off of it. Um, we can console log the number here, um, which is all good, except now if we wanted to console log my array later, uh, we can see here that it's actually gets changed, it gets mutated. So it started off with these five numbers in it and we needed to get one for something and then it ends up with these four numbers in it. Uh, so this is a pretty contrived example, but just demonstrating that arrays are mutable in JavaScript. Um, and so the basic idea behind immutability is that a lot of people believe that if you have all of your data structures unable to be changed, uh, it'll reduce bugs and make your code easier to test and write and reason about. And so the concept there would be if you needed to do something like get or set uh, uh, something on the array, it wouldn't actually change the array at all. It would return you a new array, uh, you know, with that thing changed. So let's dive into an example there. Uh, I'm going to remove that index.js and do an npm init and just kind of hold enter all the way down. And I'm going to come over to their site and they've got just, they've got the immutable namespace on NPM. So I'll do NPM install immutable dash dash save. I'm just going to go out and grab the package and then I'm going to open a new index.js and then I'm going to do a uh, const immutable equals and then just require the whole thing. Oops. Immutable. Um, okay, cool. And so basically the reason I think that we do it with a capital letter here is because we're not actually going to be calling it like a function. We're going to be using it to instantiate uh, new new things, new objects. Um, so I'm going to really quick just cover this like pretty cool example they have on their website, and I think it really well illustrates um, how this is going to work using one of their data structures, which is a map. Uh, so you can do something like this. You can do uh, var map, and they call it like map one equals, and then here we go. We'll use immutable. Uh, we'll use the map constructor and then a map is just basically going to be like uh, like a hash or like uh, an object, keys and values, something like that. So we can pass in uh, A equals 1, B equals 2, and C equals 3. Um, so we've got this map here and then we can go ahead and just console log map 1, make sure everything is working. Go out here and node. All right, cool. So you see we've got a little bit different. It's not console logging just an object. It's recognizing it as this custom type map. Um, cool. So we'll go back in here. So let's say these were like um, user scores or something like that. Um, and A, B, and C are users, and 1, 2, and 3 respectively are their scores. And B goes on this game that we're making and gets a new score, and the new score is 50. Um, so this is pretty common. You'd want to do something like you'd want to set B to 50. So with mutation, if we had an object like this, right, you would do something like, you know, map 1 you know, dot B or, you know, at uh, B, something like that. Uh, and you would just set it to 50. And that'd be well and good, except if you ever needed to get back to whatever it was, like that original value of two is lost. And also just this state, uh, the application state, the way it was here is lost forever because you've now mutated it uh, and you can't get back to that. So what you do with these immutable concepts is you would make a new variable, call it map two, something like that. 
and you would take map one and you would call the set method on it. And you're going to set B to 50, something like that. And so that's cool for a couple of reasons, because now if we console log map one, we'll see that it's actually still uh, the exact same with B being set to two. But if we go back in here and you console log map two now, we can see that there is uh, another map now with B being set to 50. So this is really great because basically we get the new map, the new object or array, whatever it is, the new state that we want here. But if for any reason we need it, we have a test around the old state or we need to get to undo, go back in time, anything like that, uh, we can always get back to map one here. And it turns out it's actually pretty efficient because as long as you don't have any pointers uh, to map one, it'll just get garbage collected. So that's no problem. But it won't, it doesn't like rack up your memory or anything like that, but it does allow you to do some really cool things like this. And then similarly, these will each have uh, getters on them. We saw a set here, it doesn't actually mutate it, it returns a new map. Uh, and they have setters too, so we could do like map1.get and then, you know, get B on there. And then here we could do dot .get and get B on there. And then we can go ahead and run it again. Uh, we can see that map1.get gets two. Map2.get gets 50. So that's a pretty basic introduction. Uh, we're going to cover the rest of the data types in other videos, uh, but let me know if Mutable.js is interesting to you, uh, and I'll know to cover it more. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.